Welcome to the College Essay Guide Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm gonna serve as the facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use that Q&A feature to type your questions at any point throughout our session today. Final announcement, you can access this recording by visiting sharpscan.com slash college essay guy. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Willamette University. All righty. Well, hi, everybody. So glad that you could join us today. Um, my name is Caitlin Forbes, and I am an assistant director here at Willamette. Um, I'm going to take the next six minutes to introduce you to our wonderful campus and tell you a little bit about what makes us unique. Um, my hope is that within our time together, you'll want to uh, spend even more time with us through a more in-depth virtual visit or visit us in person uh, in Salem, Oregon. So as I mentioned, we are located in Oregon, uh, specifically Salem, which is the state capital in the heart of the gorgeous Willamette Valley. Uh, we're a liberal arts school and we're supported by uh, graduate programs in law, business, theology, and we have a new merger with the Pacific Northwest College of Art. We're also located in a part of the country that's sought after generally for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystems, outdoor opportunities, and so many places to explore. We're also one of the most historic uh, universities in the Western United States, and we were founded before Oregon itself was even established. Uh, so we began to educate um, and shape innovative leaders right from the very start, including one of our very first graduates, Emily York, who you can see here. So as things like business and government uh, and medicine, education and other social systems began to be established in the American West, it was Willamette alum who were uh, equipped with education that truly allowed them to make an impact in these industries as uh, things quite literally grew up around us. I do like to mention our history um, because it's really important to understand our heritage in order to understand where we are today in modern times. Um, so at our founding, we were given a motto, which is not onto ourselves alone are we born. Um, it is an amazing motto. It connects to a student-centered experience, a drive to support the community around them. Um, and it truly uh, highlights that we're a place that takes knowledge and turns it into action. So you can see the motto right here, non nobi solemn nati sumus. Don't worry, there's not gonna be a test on the Latin later. Um, but as I mentioned, our motto sums up what those early alumni knew, which is um, we should really share the education that we're provided with. And we want to practice and explore how we can impact the motto and um, live it in the real world. So we do talk about the motto a lot here at Willamette and we challenge our students to live it in new and varied ways. We also do a really good job of providing students with occasions to um, use what they've learned in the classroom and apply it in real world settings through experiential learning. So they make change through positive uh, leadership experiences, service and innovation. In a classroom environment, Willamette students will meet in small groups, and this is where our highly engaged faculty members lead discussion-based courses. Um, we want to make sure students are getting those really strong critical thinking skills, like um, uh, communication skills, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider other varied perspectives. Our faculty are also stellar. They're very accomplished academics. They're researching, writing, and publishing extensively. But first and foremost, they're here as teachers. Uh, our faculty members serve as mentors, and they help our students really learn how to learn, which is so imperative. Um, and they really help students uh, learn to grow and change as the world around them changes. So it's no wonder that we've had more Oregon professors of the year than any other college in the state by quite a margin. We also feel really strongly that our classroom environment at Willamette is critically supported by experiential and co-curricular activities. So if you want to study abroad, we have that. We can provide hands-on research opportunities and we have a ton of internship opportunities available. Um, and so our unique uh, location also really contributes to those um, uh, opportunities. So we have a great ability to provide students with experiential learning opportunities. So to tell you a little bit more about where we're located, we are in uh, the center of Salem's downtown area, and we are the only campus that sits directly across from the state capitol um, in the nation, 76 feet to be exact, you can't get closer than that. Um, so you can imagine just the plethora of internship and research opportunities for our students, including politics, economics, psychology, data science, just because of our proximity to the state capitol. 
Also what's unique is on the other side of Willamette, we have Salem Health, which is Oregon's larger hospitals. And it is again, dr directly adjacent to campus. So um, our thriving pre-med program is well supported by our proximity to this medical resource as well. We also have a 305 acre outdoor learning laboratory called Xena, where students can quite literally dig in the dirt of this region, doing things like restoring habitats, participating in forestry studies and growing vegetables. So we are uh, really excited about so many unique opportunities students have. Um, one I also love to highlight is our co-location with the Tokyo International University of America. The American Studies program brings about 100 or so Japanese students to live and learn with us in Salem every year. And this program is a great reminder that Willamette has a strong commitment to all things international. Uh, we value our experiential learning from exchange students who share a campus to the amazing study abroad opportunities that students have. We have over 66 study abroad opportunities at Willamette. So as you can see, we're physically located in a way that we are just surrounded by opportunities to extend their learning far beyond campus. There's a lot more I could say about Willamette, but before my time is up, I just want to mention that we do use the common application. We review applications holistically, and we've been fully test optional for a number of years now. Uh, we never charge a fee to apply because we don't want that to be a barrier for any student that is seeking uh, access to Willamette. And every applicant, including my friend here, is uh, considered for our generous financial aid awards. We encourage applications from bright, diverse, and prepared students who really want to make an impact and interact with challenging ideas. So if you would like to be a part of the deep traditions and history that make Willamette the shaper of innovative leaders, I hope you'll take the time to learn more about us. So you can visit our website to explore our in-person or virtual opportunities. Um, you can contact me. There's my contact information. And just don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. And as always, go Bearcats. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caitlin. Our next presenter is from Linfield University. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Peyton Smith. I'm an admission counselor with Linfield University and we'll just dive right in. I only have six minutes here, so we'll get going. If you haven't heard of Linfield before, we are also located in Oregon, along with most of the schools on the Zoom this evening. We're specifically in a town called McMinnville. And McMinnville is a super cute, cozy town of about 35,000. And we kind of get the best of both worlds here in McMinnville. So we're in kind of that small, more rural town, but we're only an hour south of Portland. So you're not too far from the big city. And Salem, home to Willamette, is about 45 minutes south from us. So we're kind of sandwiched in between the two. In terms of our campus, we're a small private liberal arts university here at Linfield. So we have about 1400 students total. And what that means is you're really going to get that personalized education here at Linfield. So small class sizes, average size is about 14. All of our classes are led by faculty here at Linfield. And we have a nice diverse student body as well. So about a third students of color and a third are first generation students. So you're definitely meeting people from all different backgrounds and walks of life once you're here on our campus. In terms of our academic offerings at Linfield, we have a bit of everything and all of our majors are split up into a College of Arts and Sciences, a School of Business and a School of Nursing. We have over 50 different majors, so I can't list them all, but just to give you an idea of kind of what our students are leaning towards, our most popular programs tend to be things like nursing, the business majors, psychology, education and exercise science. Or you could be like me, maybe study creative writing. We also have things like pre-med, pre-veterinary medicine, all those sorts of more professional tracks. So you have a lot of options. The great thing is at Linfield, every single student comes in undeclared and you have a full two years before you have to declare your major. So plenty of time to figure it out. And you'll have the help of a faculty advisor through that process. So one of your professors will be there to kind of hold your hand along the way and answer any questions you might have while you're figuring out the best path. I mentioned that we have a nursing program at Linfield and just briefly here I want to touch on this. Our School of Nursing is actually located on a separate campus. So Linfield has two locations, the main campus in McMinnville and our School of Nursing campus, which is actually up right in the city of Portland. Our nursing program is a 50-50 split. So you do all four years at Linfield, but you'll spend the first two on the McMinnville campus before you transfer up to Portland to finish out your final two years doing those more nursing specific courses and clinical hours in the hospital setting. We have over a hundred different clinical partners all over Oregon. It's not just in Portland, but even up in Vancouver, Washington, down in Salem and Eugene, kind of all over. 
Another big part of your education at Linfield will be the general education requirements that we have every student complete. And these are really the heart of the liberal arts at Linfield. So ultimately what that means is we want you to have a nice well-rounded education once you're done at Linfield. We call our general education courses the Linfield curriculum. And these are really great because not only do they give you room to explore, so if you're undecided, these are a great way to take some classes and explore some new areas but they're also really flexible. So if you're like me and you're not really a math person, you don't have to take statistics or calculus. Maybe you'll take a logic of philosophy class or a sports economics class. You have some different options to choose from here. We're also big believers in the learning that happens outside of the classroom as well as inside. And in terms of hands-on learning opportunities at Linfield, that can take a variety of different forms. So maybe you'll do research like the student on the slide here. And the great thing about student faculty collaborative research at Linfield is it's highly student driven. So you're coming in to work on your own projects with that expert guidance of your faculty. Maybe you'll study science like the student in the slide. Maybe you'll look at contemporary Broadway something about Martin Luther King. We have students doing research across all the different fields, so you'll have a lot of opportunities here. Study abroad is another huge form of hands-on learning for us here at Linfield. Almost 50% of our students will study abroad before they graduate, so it's pretty common on our campuses. And the great thing about study abroad at Linfield is it's designed, again, to be really flexible. So whether you want to do a semester, a full year, or a January term abroad, you get to choose from all kinds of different countries and programs and Linfield will even cover the cost of that round trip airfare ticket for you. So your plane ticket is covered by the university. That's the money back in your pocket to go towards that experience. Our students at Linfield are highly involved in all different kinds of things. I like to say the quintessential Linfield student has their fingers in lots of different pots. So the beauty of being a small school is you can do more than one thing. And our student government oversees all of our different clubs and organizations on campus. So maybe you'll join Lula, which is Linfield University Latinx Adelante. Maybe you'll join our pre-nursing club, our student newspaper, the Linfield Review. We even have sororities and fraternities on our campus. So there's a ton of different ways to get involved. You'll definitely meet new people and kind of find that smaller community within the larger Linfield community for you to be a part of. We're a highly residential university at Linfield. And what that means is the majority of our students do live on campus. We actually require you to be on campus for three of your four years. And the main reason for that is again, we just want to build that sense of community you get at a small school like Linfield. So you'll live in a residence hall for your first two years in a dorm room like the one on the slide here. And once you're a junior at Linfield, you're eligible for an on-campus apartment. So nice step up from sharing a room with the roommate. You'll have your own bedroom and kitchen and everything at that point. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead. I know I'm short on time. We have Division Three Athletics at Linfield. Here's a quick list. And just briefly in terms of application, we're a Common App school, it's free to apply. And the biggest thing to note here is we're test blind this year. So if you're a senior, we're not requiring SAT or ACT scores, nor are we using them whatsoever. And finally, we give out very generous financial aid at Linfield, average package of about $38,000 per year. So we really try to bring that cost down for you to attend. And that is about my time, I think. So there's my info. I would love to chat with you. So feel free to reach out. We're also doing campus visits and we'd love to meet you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Peyton. Our next presenter is from Pacific University, Oregon. Thank you, Jasmine. And hello everyone, wherever you are tonight. I'm Maddie, I am a Pacific representative, and I'm here to tell you more about what makes us unique. Know that this is just a snapshot and we wanna continue this conversation, whether it's on campus, over Zoom, FaceTime, there's so many different ways that we can connect. So know that if you want to learn more, we definitely have time to do so. So at Pacific, we are also in Oregon. This is great, you're getting just a bunch of Oregon schools today. So we are just outside of the Portland Metro. And so we're in a small college town. It's called Forest Grove. And this is a great opportunity for you to get a little bit of best of both worlds. So you've got proximity to Portland Metro where many of our students participate in different performing arts opportunities, internships, having fun with friends and getting boba tea downtown. But a lot of our students come from out of state. And even some of our in-state students want to get out and explore the Pacific Northwest. And our location is gonna give you access 
to so many things outside the classroom, but we'll talk more about that. At Pacific, 100% of your classes are taught by those professors. Those are the people that are gonna be mentoring you and guiding you, challenging you as you explore during, during your time at Pacific, what it is that you're interested in, but ultimately what it is that you're passionate about. And this is Professor Chan. This is a professor of chemistry at Pacific. So if any of you are thinking the sciences, you'll probably be in her lab. But when she was in college, she actually studied chemistry and dance. So she double majored. And at Pacific, you're gonna be encouraged to have more than one interest, more than one academic interest. So this is a list of the majors and minors that Pacific offers its students. And a majority of our students can end up studying two different areas that are completely unrelated to each other because Pacific believes that they're actually related to each other. So some of the things that we do really well at Pacific, some things that our students are encouraged by are business programs at Pacific. We have a college of business that offers direct placement into opportunities uh, for outside learning. But then we also have our education, a college of education for any of you who are thinking you might wanna be a teacher or a helper in some way. Uh, kinesiology is a really common major that propels you into career fields such as physical therapy that we have at Pacific, uh, as well as athletic training. But I also have film and video and dance and a full Japanese major. When you come to Pacific, we're not gonna expect you to have your major picked right away. If you do, that's great. Let's get you in there, let's get you learning. But we're gonna encourage you to take a little bit of everything. And you do not have to pick anything on this list until the end of your sophomore year. So that's gonna give you an opportunity to really try out that major outside of the classroom. So when you're applying for jobs to be a teacher, we want you to say, hey, when I was in a kindergarten classroom and I was trying out these different learning techniques, this is what I wanna bring to you in my new employment opportunity, right? So at Pacific, know that we're gonna get you experience in those fields and you don't have to be an upperclassman to finally experience that. We wanna build that resume so that when you leave Pacific, you are competitive in either getting a job, going off to graduate programs. We wanna encourage you to take that next step uh, and mentor you and create opportunities for you along the way. But we also know that there are so many other things about you. So at Pacific, we have over 70 different clubs and organizations that range from maybe some professional development, maybe some uh, clubs and organizations related to what you want to study. Uh, one of our biggest uh, clubs on campus is actually our math club. Uh, and they compete in a real life-size version of Blockus, uh, the game. So it's encouraging for students to actually travel um, around the world. And, you know, our largest club on campus is our Hawaii club and they put on luau every April. 2,000 people come to attend it and you can be a part of that whether you're from Hawaii or not. It's encouraging because it's completely student run. So at Pacific you're going to get opportunities to continue the things that you are interested in. Maybe you're a student athlete and you want to continue that in college. Uh, maybe you just want to stay active and be a part of our intramural teams and where we have a dodgeball tournament, which is one of the most competitive things on campus. So at Pacific, we are going to encourage you to continue what it is that you're interested in, but we're also going to put things in front of you, offer those opportunities for you to try something new. Maybe that's getting out in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we have opportunities to go rock climbing at Smith Rock, uh, but we also have experiences in Portland to ride bikes and get donuts. So it doesn't have to be just the, the dirt and the trees here in the Pacific Northwest, but we'll get you out there. So we want to help you explore those interests and find that passion here at Pacific. So I do want to touch on scholarship opportunities. The biggest scholarship that you're going to get when you apply to Pacific is our merit scholarship. They start at 15 and they go up to $27,000 a year. Every student that is admitted to Pacific will receive one of these. So Give it a try. Put yourself out there. Apply to Pacific. We would love to receive your application. And once we get you kind of through that door, admitted, more scholarship opportunities are going to come up. So let's take it a step at a time, right? So applying to Pacific, we are on the Common App. It is free to apply. It's open right now. Um, and, you know, we are only requiring official transcripts and a recommendation of some sort. Um, so thinking back to who is uh, really a mentor to you, um, and maybe encouraging you to ask them uh, for a recommendation. And then, you know, we are test optional, which means you as a student have the option to send in those scores, whether you want to or not. 
Now, this is my contact information, so feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, we're a family here at Pacific, and so I definitely want to welcome you to the family. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Maddie. Our next presenter is from Oregon Institute of Technology. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Guthrie. I'm an admissions counselor at Oregon Institute of Technology. I really appreciate that uh, you guys are taking the time this evening to be here with us. I know you're very busy. So Oregon Institute of Technology is located in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Everyone's from Oregon. Tonight, we're in the very south, super south of Oregon, about 15 miles north of the California border, about four and a half hours south of Portland. So we have the two locations, Klamath Falls and Portland Metro. Portland Metro is our commuter campus. We are a small public university that feels like a small private university. With only 5,300 students, you do have the ability to study in a small environment. Average class size is less than 30. It's actually a less than 15 usually. So, and it's not rare to have a class where you have six, eight students in your lab. We have over 40 different programs, 50 student clubs and organizations, NAIA D2 athletics for men and women. And we, have, we do have housing at the Klamath Falls campus. We have your traditional freshman dorm. And then we have apartment style living as well, which is a four bedroom apartment with two bathrooms, a living area, and a kitchen. So you would each have your own separate room while in the dorm, it's double occupancy. So we have a great finish line at Oregon Institute of Technology. The average starting salary for our graduates coming right off the stage, 60,000 per year, which is very livable uh, in the industries that you're going to be choosing at our school. And 96% of our graduates are employed within six months of graduation or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduation. So I'm gonna go into our programs a little bit and then I'm going to tell you our processes. So what we're known for mainly is engineering. When you hear of a polytechnic university, oftentimes you think of engineering and we're right in there with it. We have all of the engineering programs and opportunities you see on the left with one very unique opportunity called renewable energy engineering with all of the green initiatives in the world right now. We're one of three schools on the West Coast that has this program, the other being Cal and Stanford, but it was created at Oregon Tech. Computer systems engineering, that's computer sciences. So you could do hardware, you could do software, you can do embedded systems like Siri or a smart refrigerator or all of the embedded systems that run our cars these days, right? And then we also have tech infused business degrees. All of our degrees, we want technology infused within. So if you're studying accounting, marketing, or management, you're going to learn all of the concepts that go along with running a successful business practice, but also the technology involved with the informatics, analysis, IT, cybersecurity, which are two of the most important parts of any business these days, because business is all done online, be it uh, transactions or records. And then we have our health arts and sciences. So this is where a lot of our medical students land. You can see our pre-med programs that prepare you for the MCATs and get it into the med school of your choice. And then we have some closed cohorts that include medical imaging, dental hygiene, nursing, and respiratory care. Our applied sciences can have you learning about applied math, professional writing, data sciences, applied psychology and counseling, all of these great pathways that can lead you to some great opportunities in many different industries. So we have a little bit different admissions requirements than some schools. We base your GPA off of the 15 core subject requirements we, you see on the left with a requirement of four years of math with an advanced math that has an algebra two prerequisite 
and three years of a lab science. Those are the things we look the hardest at. So if you have a 3.0 or higher in the GPA calculated by these 15 requirements with no deficiencies, meaning you haven't failed any of these courses over your high school career, or you haven't taken them, then you're going to automatically be admitted. If you have a 2.5 or higher based on these core subject requirements and one deficiency, you'll still be considered for admission. The only automatic deny is if you have a deficiency in math and science. So you have to have four years and three years in order to be eligible for admission at our university. So the process is pretty simple. The application's online. We're also on the Common App. I forgot to put that on there. So on oit.edu, that's our website. You just go to apply. There's a $50 application fee, but I'll give anyone on earth who asks the fee waiver uh, if it takes away that barrier to you applying to our school. So you'll self-report all of your information. So we only collect your transcript after you graduate. So you'll self-report all of the classes I just went over. So some differences are we don't require an essay or letters of recommendation, no foreign language requirement. We only collect your transcript at the end or ACT, SAT test optional. This is about what we cost estimated. So very affordable. We do offer WUI to any student in the WUI states automatically. You don't have to do a separate application. We have some wonderful automatic scholarships that are based on your GPA, SAT, or ACT. So here's my information. If you want to reach out, uh, email or call me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. So that concludes the presentation portion of our session today. We're now gonna to transition to the Q&A portion. Again, to our attendees, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in that Q&A. I'm gonna pose a couple questions to our group in the meantime, and our presenters will respond to the questions in the order in which they presented. So the first question here, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, so I'll get us started off. I definitely would recommend um, as you're investigating these amazing schools, reach out to your admission counselor. We are here to clarify any questions that you have and come visit us. Oregon is beautiful. I'll say that on behalf of all my lovely presenters here. It is so gorgeous, whether it is fall, spring, summer, come visit us. Uh, but just keep in touch with your admission counselor. We're not meant to be scary or intimidating. We just want to help you through this process. So that's the biggest piece of advice I can give, but come explore Oregon. It's beautiful. So my one piece of advice that I always like to give students is to keep an open mind. I'm sure you've heard it a lot going through this process, but it can be super overwhelming. You're exploring all these different college options and they're all so good. You know, how do you ever choose? But look into all of them, do your due diligence, do your research and just be open. So if one of us calls you, maybe pick up the phone, take a look at the brochures we send you in the mail. You never know, you might find the perfect school that wasn't even on your list to begin with. My piece of advice would be that throughout this college search process and the applying process, people are going to ask you questions about yourself. Uh, they're often going to ask you things that you do well or things you're interested in. Uh, so my advice is to always connect with someone that you trust. Maybe it's your parent, maybe it's a grandparent, maybe it's a school counselor, uh, but have those conversations with them about what you do well uh, and then become comfortable talking about that. Uh, because you'll have to one brag about yourself and it's okay to do that with colleges uh, but you got to find out what you need to brag about if maybe you're a little bit shy or unsure uh, so i would say find out what you do well and then become comfortable talking about that good outstanding advice yeah caitlin you're right it's so beautiful in oregon everything's always wet and clean right so uh including our cars so uh that's what i'm excited about but you know what i always tell students is while you're doing this process, you know, you're only going to do it once and it's a very exciting process. So really, you know, live within it. But the best piece of advice I think I could give you is start early and focus on your deadlines and 
get your applications done early, start your FAFSA early, start searching for scholarships because these deadlines are going to sneak up on you, just like October stuck up on us this year, uh, March and November 1st and everything else will sneak up on you as well. So just get it all out of the way. Your senior year is going to move quickly and uh, so quickly you don't want to miss it. So once again, you know, get your application started early. Everyone's application should be open now. Ask for help. Um, if you feel a little bit overwhelmed, lean on someone. Get your financial aid and scholarship stuff going and uh, enjoy the process. Visit some campuses. Call us up. We all love talking to students. We sit around and wait for it all day. And uh, never think that you're bugging us. You could ask me any question and I'll answer it because it's important to me. So uh, that's the advice I have. Thank you all so much. Great advice uh, from the group. Um, final question here. And again, um, our presenters will respond in the order in which they present it. But the question is, what is one myth you like to debunk on the college admissions process? I would definitely say um, in terms of myths uh, that smaller schools or schools you might not have heard of aren't schools worth investigating. Um, I believe the Linfield rep kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, I think that it can be so exciting to apply to schools you've already heard of, but there are so many amazing schools out there. So I would just say a myth would be um, only applying to schools that you, your friends are applying to, or that have, you know, big name recognition, you know, it's always good to investigate the right fit for you. So the myth would be, it's not about what the school wants. It's about what you want. This is your search process. You're the one going to college. We already did that, right? This is all about you. So don't feel like it's all about what we want. It's really about what's best for you as a student. So one myth that I'll debunk, and we've all kind of touched on this, I think, but maybe you're thinking that us admission staff, the ones sitting behind the computer reading your application are super scary and we're always judging you. And that's so not the case. Don't be afraid of us. Like, like Dan was saying, and Caitlin, like, please call us, email us, send us your questions. And now you know, too, you've seen us, you've seen our faces, so you know who's sitting behind that computer. So when it comes time to hit submit on that common application, you don't have to be afraid. You know where it's going and who's going to be looking at it. So definitely just connect with us. Um, we're not scary. We're nice. We promise. Yeah, I love that advice. Um, and I think that even goes as far as talking about money. Uh, so the myth I want to debunk is that if you talk about money with the college, that they're not going to give you money. Uh, and I don't think that's true because is if you're concerned about financially that investment of college, definitely have those conversations, whether it's you start in admissions or you go directly to financial aid. Um, I know that many times I work with students, um, you know, as they take that step to apply and then they go, okay, now I'm getting financial aid packages. What does this mean? What does it all say? Uh, and I often sit down with students and actually compare those packages to help them decide what truly might be the best um, and most financially supportive option for them. So um, know that you can also talk to us about money, affording college, uh, and we can connect you with different departments or even connect you with uh, local or community-based organizations that could provide some additional funding as well. So use this as a resource in that sense too. Yeah, everyone has such great, great options or great advice. Um, I've thought of a couple, but the one I like to stick with is, you know, we all covered our admissions requirements pretty, um, you know, pretty quickly, but the admissions requirements are, they could be a little scary, a little daunting. Students see that and they, maybe they come up short in one side of it and they think automatically, I can't go to this school. They don't want me. What we are doing is uh, recruiting people, recruiting students. Each one of you are individuals and maybe you do come up a little bit short on some of our requirements, but reach out, work with us there's always a reason for everything, right? So if you feel that you're a good fit at our school and you hit most of the indicators, reach out. Maybe you broke your leg in 10th grade. I don't know that. And it made you not focus on your math or a little bit of your science, but you're still very interested in becoming a doctor or engineer. We can't 
throw away a doctor or an engineer because your GPA um, is missing a couple of points. So reach out and work with us. Um, explain how much you want to go to that school and why. And uh, we really appreciate that. Again, um, great, great info from all of our presenters here. Thank you all for responding to those questions. Um, so we are approaching the end of our virtual college fair for today. But before we go, I have a few closing um, announcements. So as you exit from this session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so. But please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you that you can access this recording by visiting shrivescan.com slash college essay guide. I wanna thank all of our presenters for joining us, for all of your advice, for all of your insight and sharing that information with our attendees, but also to our attendees, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us. Um, I hope everyone has a great evening. Again, thank you so much.